everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to wrap up some things that I finished reading in the month of March. The longest month we've had so far in 2020. I'm currently editing this video and I forgot, even though I made a note to myself, to mention that I started a bookstagram account on Instagram. So I'll link that down below. It's literally just split reads, so my channel name. I've been posting basically every book that I'm reading, also posting on stories. Yeah, I thought that would be a fun thing for me to take on. So go follow me if you please. I got a lot of reading done this month, honestly. I already posted my first part to this wrap up and it was all middle grade books. So this part is going to contain non-middle grade books until the end. There's a few middle grade books that I ended up reading at the end of the month that I'll talk about in this video, but we'll start with non-middle grade things first. Last time I gave you a really bad road noise and I apologize for that. So now we're in front of my fireplace. I even lit a candle for you. The first one that I finished was Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGinnis. This is her new release and I listened to this one on audiobook. Narrator has like a whole accent and everything. It's set in Georgia and we're following a main character who basically is drunk and like stumbles in an argument, ends up becoming lost from a group that she's staying with at this camp in the Georgia woods. And it's all about her plight for survival. She gets really, really lost and can't really find help. A lot of gruesome things happen in this book, including her like doing things to her own body to take care of it. This I would recommend to people who like really gritty novels, especially people who have liked other Mindy McGinnis books. It does have the same tough as nails main character as all of her other books that I've read so far, but I didn't think this story was as special as The Female of the Species. I've also read her book Hair one, which I enjoyed. I felt like this one was missing just a little bit of something. It was also very short and the end was very sweet and like it tied everything neatly which is I don't feel like her usual MO. So I like this one but I didn't love it as much as I've loved The Female of the Species and Heroine. The second book that I finished was A Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is a chunker of a book that I also mostly listened to. I kept up probably the last half I read while listening. In this book we're following a police officer in Philadelphia in an area of town that has become synonymous with drug abuse and you know addiction so it's kind of like a very dilapidated mindset a very hard kind of environment and gritty also is a good word for it this police officer is looking for her sister who is one of those people that have become um, kind of lost in this world of substance abuse and she can't find her sister and she's like thinking the worst especially as they now know in this town that she's working in that there is a serial killer out on the loose and he's mostly killing sex workers. The main character thinks that it might be her. We're told the story and we're uh, introduced to these characters in flashbacks and present day kind of timelines that then come together. You learn all about like how the sister fell into substance abuse. You learn a lot about the police officer and her own upbringing and there's a lot of twists in this book that I thought were well done but overall I felt like this book was kind of a slog to get through. I know some people have really really enjoyed it and for a police procedural I think I did enjoy how much attention was paid to the characters. We really got to know the characters very well but it's definitely a more suspenseful and quiet procedural police procedural than most thrillers. I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars. The next book that I finished was a new release called The Fire Never Goes Out. This is a memoir in pictures by Noelle Stevenson, the creator of Nimona. I think she does She-Ra for Netflix now too. And inside it's doodles and thoughts and years in reviews of her life so far, how her work has evolved and kind of like how over time she has climbed this this ladder and have, has become so successful at such a young age. It's also about her understanding her own mental health and understanding her um, sexuality. A lot of this book from what I've gathered from Goodreads is stuff that she's already published on her Tumblr before. There is some kind of like new stuff but most of it is stuff that she's already put out into the world but has just kind of collected in this book. I had never seen those parts so I thought all of those years and reviews were really interesting especially kind of like towards the end how she starts looking back at her previous years and reviews 
interviews and sees how she's kind of framing her own life even though she's kind of giving you pieces of how her life is not perfect that still she is framing it in a way that comes across to you like she's doing the work like she's working so hard and that's why she's so successful it does feel like she doesn't want to tell us everything which is totally understandable i think after i read this and i sat with it and then i thought about it a few days later i felt like i needed to bring down my rating a little bit just because i felt like this was a little bit too simple in describing all of the things that she's gone through so far um and i kind of just wanted a little bit more but maybe that's something that we can wait for in like two decades when she has a lot more life experience to tell us about and here i am still hoping that she does something else like nimona just a whole different world but it was interesting to get to know the creator of these things and kind of like what it takes to be an artist of this sort in today's world the next book that i finished was one that i really really enjoyed it's probably my favorite that i'm going to talk about in this whole video and it was honestly a surprise for me. It is Jessica Simpson's open book. I listened to this and I loved the audiobook experience of it. You can tell in the audiobook what is hard for her to talk about and what takes courage for her to say because you can feel it in her voice of her like starting to tear up and feeling emotions that are heavy when it comes to the things that she's revealing to us. So this is Jessica Simpson's memoir about her life so far, 30 plus years in the industry, as well as like some of her stuff from her childhood, which I found really fascinating of seeing how she grew up as a preacher's daughter, how she views her father and mother, kind of their issues. There's really fun stuff in here about her trying out for the Musketeers, so for the Mickey Mouse Club and like me and Ryan Gosling and Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears, um, and Christina Aguilera, and kind of like the, the difficulties that she had fitting into that world. World. There's a huge chunk of this book that's devoted to her relationship, marriage, and divorce, and TV show with Nick Lachey, which was utterly fascinating to someone who loved that show growing up and can now recognize that it was a very unhealthy relationship. One that I think we romanticized more than we should have, just to see how she viewed him as an 18 year old. She got married at like 21, which is ridiculous. Also, her just dating after Nick Lachey, so Tony Romo and John Mayer good god John Mayer seems like a horrible boyfriend I also really found fascinating learning about her starting her business it's one of the most successful celebrity brands her meeting her new husband who she's been with for like 10 years now um, and becoming a mother she also discusses a lot about substance abuse that she kind of came to recognize was a problem very recently with alcohol this just felt very very genuine it felt like juicy celebrity gossip that I wanted but it was not really laid to us in a way that was sensational or like trying to point fingers. I really think she looked into herself. It just felt very vulnerable, very genuine. I felt like I was just talking to a good friend. This is kind of the epitome, the example of a great celebrity memoir in my opinion. And I've read a lot of celebrity memoirs and I've read a lot of memoirs and this one was just very, very fascinating. I loved it. Next, I finished a witchy graphic novel, shape-shifting graphic novel, and that is Mooncakes. Mooncakes is by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walk. We have a witch and we have a like turning into werewolf shapeshifter. They identify as non-binary, which I thought was interesting, and the main character also has hearing aids. This is kind of like a story of there's evil in the town. I really enjoyed the illustrations. I think the art is adorable. I really enjoyed kind of the ideas of the characters, and I loved like the witchy aspects of the book, but I didn't really love like how it all played out. I felt like the evil characters were very, very evil, and you can see kind of like the way that they're drawn. They're just like cackling evil overlords. I thought that this was just okay. For being kind of a longer graphic novel, you would have thought that there'd be a lot more kind of development of the characters and the plot and I just didn't really feel that with this book. The next book I read I do not have. I listened to on audiobook and it took me quite a while to finish. It's Saint X by Alexis Shaken. This is the book that hmm, has been compared to The Girls by Emma Klein, which I'm here to tell you that it is not or it was not to me. It is a book that is kind of being marketed as you know, it looks at true crime and it looks at how girls are looked at in the media. Some of that happened, but I think the majority of this book is about becoming obsessed by something 
and doing everything you can to learn more about this. I didn't know coming into this book that it was a multiple point of view book. This family who goes to St. X, which is an island that doesn't exist, to go on vacation and then the older sister gets lost and the younger sister is only like six or seven when it happens and she kind of lives with this her whole life of them having to uh, move on from the fact that they've lost a family member in this way. So it's kind of like the Natalie Holloway story in a way. And then it's following the sister, her name is Claire, following Claire as she is living in New York and then she stumbles across one of the suspects that they think committed the crime. Nobody had ever been charged with the crime. I just thought that it was very very slow paced which the girls by emma klein was slow paced but it was a story that was so gripping to me i think this one because we do have those multiple points of views we kind of go around to people that don't matter as much there's a lot of commentary in this book about race and privilege and class which i think landed at parts but didn't land all the time. I think I just gave it three stars. It was one that I was really really looking forward to and just didn't pan out for me. So still trying adult fiction here. Still doing it. The book that I read after that was a little comics book and that is Book Love by Debbie Tung. I love Debbie Tung's illustration style. This is the second book of hers that I've read. The other book that I've read of hers, Quiet Girl in a Noisy World, I loved last year. So I put this one in my nonfiction five star TBR predictions and I ended up giving this one four stars. But I think Quiet Girl in a Noisy World had a better kind of arc story. Even though they were single comics, I still felt like there was a beginning, middle, and end. I would totally recommend this to book lovers. If you just want to feel seen and like read something relatable, this is totally worth your time, I think. Next, I finished a graphic memoir called Dancing at the Pity Party, a dead mom graphic novel. This is by Tyler Feder. It's a totally sweet graphic memoir that I'd recommend to fans of like Lucy Nicely and Brian Feist, people that get to like the core of what it is to be a person and really like emotionally give themselves to you through their graphic memoirs. This book is, as you can tell from the title, Tyler for there looking into her mom's death and what that has meant to her in the 10 years since the death has happened, what it was like learning about her mom's cancer diagnosis, her going through treatment and how that ended up, you know, not working and they lost their mom in like less than a year. Yes, I cried reading this graphic memoir. It is very devastating. Cancer sucks, but it's also just a lovely tribute to her mother. You can see all the lovely memories that she's made with her mother. There's also a lot of funny parts in this graphic memoir, a lot of relatable stuff. Tyler Fredair is only like three years older than me so like all of the pop culture references and like cultural things that she's talking about are things that I, I can relate to so I like that as well. And I also really loved in this graphic memoir how we learned a lot about Jewish traditions when it comes to like uh, funeral rites and like what you do in that situation. I've totally found that educational and fascinating. Let's talk about the rest of the middle grade books that I finished in this month of March. The first one that I want to talk about is one that I was disappointed by and it's The Thing About Jellyfish. I listened to this one on audiobook and I felt like it was just sad for sad sake. We're following a main character who is kind of like an outsider. She does not really fit in into her school and she used to have a best friend but that best friend doesn't want to be her friend anymore. The crux of the story is that the main character character's friend, who is no longer her friend, she's her ex-friend, drowned vacationing in another state. The main character going through that grief and understanding that, and she kind of doesn't accept it in a way that she basically says, I'm going to prove that it was a jellyfish that stung her. She gets really into this jellyfish and she starts trying to contact scientists to learn more about weird species of jellyfish that might be poisonous in this way. It just felt to me like a cry for help. Obviously, it seemed like nobody here understood like the internal situation that this child was going through. The parents were definitely not there and I found that really depressing and sad and I didn't feel like this book really grappled with the fact either that this best friend was really mean to her at some points. It's a book that talks about grief but I feel like because it came out in 2015, maybe it was in the leading part of that like grief trend in middle grade fiction and when it came out uh, I didn't read it and now I've read so many grief middle grade books that have been so much better for me that I thought were better that this one just didn't land for me. So I give it two stars. The next book that I finished was Catherine's War. This is a translated graphic novel from the original French and also I read in the back that it was a novel at one point too. So it's gone through kind of a lot of iterations. This is a book that follows Rachel who is the main character. She takes on a new identity. She becomes Catherine as she is running away from the Nazis during World War II in occupied France. So throughout this book she goes to like three 
three or four different places. Every time that it seems like the Nazis have heard that there's Jewish kids hiding out here, they move her to the next place. And in this book, the main character really loves photography and she takes a lot of pictures during the war of all the places that she's been. If you like historical fiction, it's based off of real events, but it is a little bit fictionalized. It has a love story, it has really sweet, cute kids and friendships that you see develop, and it has really lovely illustrations. I think the illustrations are probably the biggest thing that drew me to the story. After that I finished another book that I gave 4.5 stars and another middle grade March book and that's A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. I really love this book. I would totally recommend it to library lovers. It was kind of hard to read during this kind of like I'm stuck in my house and I can't go to the library to work and to browse the collection. That makes me really sad um, because this book is all really about why libraries are important. We follow really interesting public library employees and we also follow regular patrons that you would find at any public library. If you work at a public library, you know what I'm talking about. Those parts made me so happy to kind of see myself in these pages. We are following a main character named Jamie who did something kind of embarrassing but also something that violated the code of conduct at her school and so she is punished by the principal to do a whole summer of volunteering at the library as a result. When you start the book, you don't really know what it is that she did and it's through kind of learning about the community members and the people coming into the library that you start to learn more about what she did. So this book is mostly her trying to let go of that mortification and embarrassment and to learn more about her community. She hasn't ever really been someone who goes to the library a lot and now she's kind of understanding like why libraries are so important and she feels like her time is really worth something at the library when she's helping people. I would just recommend this to someone who likes really quiet, cozy, sweet reads. It's a really compassionate story and one that I just kind of like want to give a, a nice little hug too. Probably one of my favorites that I read this month. So the last book that I finished for middle grade March and March in general was Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. I read this all yesterday which is really fun. I gave myself a challenge to do like sprints so I read this in about two sittings and it was a nice sweet short story of a girl that is growing up in Oregon. Really wants to go visit her dad's side of the family in Harlem. She's never met them and she's been alive for 11 years and you can tell that they're there's some issues between her father and her grandfather and that side of the family and that's kind of why they don't visit very often. She ends up going to Harlem with her dad to visit, bringing to light all of the issues that the family has had over time, um, why parents sometimes keep secrets or don't talk about hard things. The main character, Amara, kind of being like, let's talk about it. Amara is a girl that doesn't feel like she fits into her mother's idea of what a girl should be like. And I think this is just a nice story of your family understanding you and to not try to make you into a mold of what they want you to be. And it's also a story a lot about black culture and history that Amara is learning through a project that she's doing for school that is compounded by her visit in Harlem. She gets to learn a lot about Harlem's history through her grandfather father. I also really enjoyed all of the like New York City life stuff in this so there's a lot of stuff of her like just walking the street and going in the subway which you know reading this is kind of like nobody can really do that in New York right now but I really like those descriptions of the city life as well. I thought that overall this book was a nice read for me and what I what I wanted though some parts did feel a bit predictable like I kind of knew how what the conflict was and how it was going to be resolved and also a little bit simplistic in how the conflict conflict is described to us and how you see characters kind of talking about it. I was not surprised by any of the things that happened in this book, but if you're looking for just a nice, quiet, introspective read, I do recommend this. I have liked Renee Watson's Piecing Me Together better than this, but I will keep reading Renee Watson exactly when I am looking for a quiet, introspective read. If you have read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!